Coming to order, will the clerk of the board please call the roll? Call. Present. Police. Present. Hi. Here. Segura. Here. Tarantino. Here. This is the point on the agenda where members of the public may address the board on matters posted for the special meeting and in accordance with government code section 54954.3 paragraph A, the board will provide an opportunity for members of the public to directly address this legislative body concerning any item that has been described in the notice for the meeting before or during consideration of that item. Each person wishing to address an item on the meeting notice in closed session will have two minutes to do so. Madam Clerk, are there any speakers? Yes, I have comments from four speakers. Okay. The first comments are from Cesar, Hern Cesar Fernandez. The board has likely just moved to lay off nearly 200 educators in this district in order to save $20 million. Now we have a report from a state agency that says this layoff was not due solely to the external factors that we have been hearing about for over a year. It was mismanagement and fraud. Each of you trustees has now read the report and can see that the superintendent is called out as responsible over and over again. It is time to hold someone accountable other than these 200 educators that will now have to seek employment elsewhere. Trustee Pike. When you were board president, you stated it in a board meeting that you would wait for the FICMAT report to hold someone accountable for this debacle. You have the report, you have seen who is responsible, and now I ask you to hold true to your word. Thank you. The next comments are from Chris Elam. You have heard from me many times over the past several years, so I will keep this short and sweet. I used to be a huge supporter of Dr. Gianni. I met with her in her office to discuss various issues and always felt heard, but I slowly learned that being heard wasn't necessarily followed with action. Over the past two years, I've been disappointed with the lack of accountability shown by Dr. Janney. I truly believe that she went into this job with the best of intentions, but like many other admin who are promoted in our district, she was just in over her head. There's no shame in being in over your head, except when you deny it and continue in the position. The time is up. The audit report has made clear just how over her head she is. It's time for Dr. Janney to leave Sweetwater and move on to the next phase of her life while letting someone else clean up this mess. Here's to hoping the board finally can find someone that doesn't leave us on the DA's desk yet again a few years from now. The next comments are from Roberto Romero. Is anyone really surprised that the FICMAT report came back with findings of possible fraud? Mike Fine, the head of FIGMAT, publicly declared there was fraud at Sweetwater 18 months ago. So, of course, his employees found possible indications of fraud to protect him so he wouldn't be open to charges of slander. The highly trained staff at the San Diego County Office of Ed Business Office reviewed Sweetwater's budgets, payroll, paperwork, etc. several times a year, every year, and they approved them each time. Either San Diego County Office of Ed was totally negligent and didn't do the required reviews, or they examined them and believed they were correct and complete. During the same time frame, the district's external auditors, totally unrelated to San Diego County Office of Ed, completed required audits into all areas of the district's finances with no major findings. So either the San Diego County Office of Ed and the auditors are all entirely incompetent and should be thoroughly investigated, or the FICMAT findings are questionable. There is no true evidence in the audit report that substantiates deliberate or intentional acts, part of the definition of fraud. There are lots of assumptions the employee didn't work over the weekend or indirect linkages may or would generally be considered type of language. Since FIGMAT recently had to rewrite San Ysidro's report because it included findings that were not supported by evidence, the FIGMAT audit seems the less reliable indicator. The board has a choice. Obviously, two of you are looking for a scape scapegoat. The quickness of adding this particular board item indicates you want to throw Dr. Janney under the bus to make yourselves look better. That demonstrates that you care more about your political future than the reputation of Sweetwater, and it makes anyone you appoint highly suspect and of questionable integrity. Or the board could recommend pushing back on the FICMAT audit findings, possibly with the support of San Diego County Office of Ed, who is called out for dereliction of duty as often as Sweetwater, and appeal the audit or file an injunction or something. That is what a board who truly believed in the honesty and integrity of their district and staff would do. 
And remember, whatever you decide for the superintendent also applies to the board since you were specifically included on page 21 of the report. These indicators should have been readily visible to senior district administrators, board members, and county office panelists. The next comments are from Stephanie Hubner. Sweetwater has lost faith in Dr. Janney. She needs to go. As someone who stood on a hot sunny corner holding a sign for hours to promote her election, I am most saddened to write this. However, she continues to prove that she is not trustworthy as superintendent and that harm cannot be repaired. Our faith in her is gone. It's time for her to be gone too. There are no further public comments. If there are no further communication, I will recess this meeting for consideration of the following closed session items as posted on the meeting notice. One, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, paragraph two of subdivision D of government code section 54956.9. Two, public employee evaluation appointment, government code section 54957.